This beautiful thing is the Ape Rider Bonobo motorcycle style e-bike. So if you want a motorcycle style bike, you can't get more motorcycle than this. It's a 750 watt hub motor with 48 volts and 20 amp hours in that big gas tank looking battery on the top. It has a big bright headlight in the front and a brake light tail light in the back. So Ape Rider is the biggest bike manufacturer in Turkey and they have come to the United States under the name brand of Ape Rider and just started selling these bikes recently. So we're gonna get this one out and see what it can do. But first, let's just walk around it and look Look at all the features you get on this bike. The 48 volt 20 amp hour battery is removable with a key. It also has an on off switch you can use to turn it off so people can't just jump on your bike and steal it. And the 750 watt hub motor looks like that. You get a seven speed shifter on the back and it's a single speed in the front with a twist grip throttle and seven speed shifter on the right handlebar. Metal fenders on the back and then plastic fender on the front and then another protector bolted to the frame. These are 20 by 4.5, which are bigger than most e-bike tires. They're Kenda Elites, and they have a nice street tread on them. So they handle really great on the street, a lot better than your standard knobbies that you get on a lot of bikes like this. And it's got a classic round headlight that is super bright. We'll take it in the dark later and show you just how bright it is. And then if we look at the inverted forks here, they're hydraulic forks. They're not adjustable at all, but you can see it's an inverted style fork. Works great, we'll test that later too. And then in the back, there's a spring. Uh, not really a shock absorber, just a spring to, for the rear suspension. And then the super flat seat, so you can really find the best position moving forward and back on that seat. And then motocross style handlebars up front. And it comes with two bar end mirrors that you can put on the end of your bars like that if you want to see who's behind you. And if you don't want those, there's also plugs so you can just run it like that, like a regular bicycle motorcycle as well. It's got an M5 controller with three levels of pedal assist built into it. And the controller controller is there, and then you got a separate headlight and horn switch. And there is a cup holder that you can use to hold a cup while you're riding. There's a Tektro hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. And it has this handy bucket you can carry things in in the middle of the bike. So if you want to bring a water bottle or some tools, you can certainly put that in there. Uh, the price is $2,400 as of making this video. Use 10% off coupon hoo-hoo if you want to get 10% off this bike or use the link in the description. So let's get it out on the road and just see what it'll do. Here's full throttle acceleration without pedaling from a stop. So the top speed on this out of the box is just under 20 miles an hour. So that's how long it takes you to get up to 19.5 miles an hour, which is the max speed. And then if you bomb a hill with it, I can get up to close to 40 miles an hour on most bikes going down this hill. So this one, you get up into the 30s and then it kind of stops. I don't know if it's the resistance from the wind or the big tires, but we also are going to do a brake test here because we're coming up on a red light. So it stops great. These brakes really work. They really haul it down quick. So very happy with the brakes. And on this very steep hill coming back from the beach, you can see how steep it is just from the angle of the cars versus the houses here. And it's a nice long climb. And we're going to do it from a standing stop with... Uh, no pedal assist so i'm just using the throttle to get up the hill here and you can see it's gaining speed gaining speed and so we're over 10 miles an hour which is pretty impressive on this hill 12 13 12 so 12 or 13 looks like about all it wants to do going up this hill on its own but for similarly powered bikes this is this is a very good performance it's i'm pretty impressed that it could hold more than 10 miles an hour getting up this hill and then we're going to do it again but we're going to pedal so if I help it by pedaling, this is where having multiple gears versus a fixed gear really does help. So I go through a few gears here, the, I think fifth, sixth, and seventh, as I'm going up the hill and moving faster. And it's geared so that you can help it even at 20 miles an hour, which is great. A lot of bikes like this, you kind of spin out at 15 miles an hour, but this one has a nice high top gear. So if you're pedaling, you can get close to 20 miles an hour, even up a steep hill like this, and you really feel like you're helping, but you're not spinning too fast. So we went ahead and ran through the light and just got all the way up the hill super fast. So big thumbs up in terms of, of uh, functionality and choosing the proper gearing. I think they did a great job of picking the top gear for this bike so you can go fast and save the battery by pedaling while you're riding. The only thing I don't like about the shifter is with that fat tire on the back, it's almost touching the chain. So the chain almost touches the tire when you're in the lowest gear. I don't think you'll use the lowest gear that much anyway, so I'm just resolving never to use first gear just because I think that's way too close, especially if you're in mud or dirt or something. It's just too, not enough clearance there. And with the combination of the street tires and the good suspension, you can really rip into a corner with it as well. This is a 20 mile an hour corner and it feels totally safe. So 
think it handles great, the corner's great, and I have a lot of confidence in it with the way they've set it up. It's hard to really get a feel for how much bigger a 4.5 is than a 4.0 unless you look at them side by side. So that's a 4.5 on the left and a 4.0 on the right. You can see how much bigger the Ape Rider wheel is than a standard 4.0 rear tire. So the only thing I didn't do in this video is unlock it to go off-road mode. So it should do about 28 miles an hour when it's unlocked. I just don't have instructions on how to unlock it. So I'm kind of stuck at 20 miles an hour on throttle only rather than 28. Here's how the suspension works. I'm real happy with the front end. You can see it sucks up this speed bump real nice in slow motion. And the rear end does kick me off the seat. I'm 200 pounds. So an option there would be to upgrade the shock like I've done on my other bikes. You can do that for around $100. This one has a 150 millimeter shock on it. And in my range test, you can see at the top, it's starting to flash the low battery warning at exactly 30 miles. So 30 miles of range, riding it all around a hilly neighborhood. I think that's good. It, it compares favorably with other 750 watt, 48 volt, 20 amp hour bikes. So expect 30 miles of range and maybe more if you do more pedaling than I did. But I was mostly throttle only in this test. And the cup holder works great, though I'd recommend having a cup with a waterproof lid. And then you can flip the mirrors in. They're, they're easy to quickly flip in and out if you're going to be hooliganing around and, and going in between tight spaces. You don't definitely want to be scratching up people's cars. And if you need that extra clearance, you can just flip them, flip them in and flip them out at will. And this is just the perfect vehicle for going places that are hard to get to in a car. Like it's a nightmare coming down here in a car and trying to find a parking place and just getting stuck in traffic, sitting at lights. It's really frustrating. So. For that purpose, this thing is way better than a car. And wherever you live, there's probably a downtown area or somewhere that's really busy, that's hard to get to, and you just dread having to look for a parking place. But if you're on this thing, man, you just go straight to the sand with it and park there. The seat height is 30.5 inches. And this is what a person who's six feet tall with a 32 inch inseam looks like riding the bike. And this is what it looks like when he pedals. So your knees are definitely gonna get high if you're trying to pedal this bike. Is that a problem? I think most people don't pedal this type of bike very much anyway. So I don't see that as a problem if you're gonna use it as a moped scooter type of thing. And it's very stable. You can see no hands on the bars. He's cruising along just fine. So I went to the darkest place I could find, which is in the park in the dark. And you can see how bright that headlight is. It really did a great job on the headlight and the taillight and brake light combo is bright as well. So this is what it looks like to ride the Ape Rider Bonobo at night on the street. You can see everything that's in front of you and I think it's great. And the Ape Rider e-bike arrives at your house in a big ape shaped box. And opening the box to see what's inside, you can see that you don't have to put the wheels on. It's pretty much uh, fully assembled except you need to put the handlebars on and hook up the controller and of course charge up the battery. There's a key that locks the battery onto the bike and it is a UL listed charger. It takes six or seven hours to charge the battery. And then you remove the handlebar clamp, pick the handlebars up after they've been unpackaged to put the top plate on it and then torque down the bolts, figure out what angle you want to ride at and then bolt it down, hook up the connectors. They, they are color coded and they only snap together one way. So snapping them in to be able to control the bike and then the cup holder needs to be risen up and put in a horizontal position for your cup. And then the pedals go on, the left ones go on counterclockwise, the right ones go on clockwise, snap the battery in place, push it forward until it clicks. And then install the mirror with the spacer. So you put the both spacers onto the mirror and then just tighten that bolt to hold it into the side of the handlebar. Now the Ape Riders have a pledge here where they actually are helping to restore ape habitats all over the world. That's a part of their, their mission as a company. So if you buy one of these bikes, you're helping to preserve the apes in the world, which I think is a great thing. And Ape Rider has a real presence in the United States. So all the bikes are warehoused here and in stock, as well as all the parts for the bike. So if you ever need a part, they can get it to you quickly. And if you order a bike, they'll ship it to you quickly. They also have a hundred dealer network for service if you need servicing on the bikes. And if you want the bike delivered to your house or delivered to a bike store, they can do that as well, fully assembled. So uh, it's an extra $200 if you have them deliver it to a bike store to set it up for you. And it's an extra $250 if you want it brought to your house fully ready to ride. And if you want to assemble it yourself, like I did, they ship that big box to your house for free. So there's a coupon code in the description and a link to get to their website. If you want 10% off, use the coupon code hoo hoo. Tell them I sent you.